Today we're about to go over running backs that I cannot stop drafting in my mock drafts for this upcoming fantasy football season. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally cannot wait for this fantasy football season to get here. I am itching to watch some games and itching to win some fantasy football matchups. But first player up on this list today, Nick Chubb, currently going as running back number six in PPR. Look, I think Nick Chubb is going to be a steal this year. And I'm saying that as he's going as the number six running back, like I just said. But he has serious potential to finish as a top three running back this season. First reason being is that Nick Chubb should see a lot more passing action since Kareem Hunt is no longer on the team. It's going to make him that much more valuable in your PPR league. Safe to say that was the thing holding him back last season. He could have had so many more massive games for fantasy owners, but he just wasn't catching a lot of passes due to the fact that Kareem Hunt was on the team. Now, the snap count last year wasn't as lopsided as you would probably think. Nick Chubb only finished with 660, while Kareem Hunt finished with 492. Now, if we compare those numbers to, let's say, a player like Austin Eckler, he tripled his running back number two snap count last season. So if Chubb can even get to two times the amount of snaps that the number two running back on this team can get, then he has that much more potential to get better from last season. Now, to make things even sweeter, the Browns also have a top five offensive line for Nick Chubb to run behind this season. And since 2019, Chubb has sat right around that 16 fantasy points per game mark. But I really think this season with Kareem Hunt off the team, he takes a major step up towards that 20 points a game mark. And that would be massive for Nick Chubb fantasy owners this season. Tony Pollard is the next man up on our list, currently going as running back number nine in PPR. Now, with the departure of Ezekiel Elliott from the Cowboys, I am fully expecting Pollard to take that next step in this upcoming year and really explode, very similar to the Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt situation that we just talked about. Now, Pollard and Zeke basically split snap counts last season, and I don't think Malik Davis or Ronald Jones are even going to come close to Pollard's snap count in this upcoming year. Now, the Cowboys running back strength of schedule isn't the greatest sitting at 19th in the league, but I'm really not too worried about Pollard here just because his high level of play and his explosiveness. I'm telling you right now, this guy is a superstar and he's been getting held back by Zeke for a, a couple of years now, if I do say so myself. Now their offensive line ranks in the top 10 for efficiency, which is of course always a good sign. And Tony Pollard has increased his fantasy production each and every season in the league so far. I also love the receiving upside here as well. He recorded 39 receptions last year, once again, while splitting with Zeke. So I would expect an increase in that department as well for Tony Pollard. Joe Mixon is next up on this list, going as running back number 15. Now the Bengals have a pretty mediocre offensive line, but the reason that I'm interested in Mixon this year is that I like how everybody is sleeping on his pass catching high floor. Also, now that Samaji P. Ryan is off of the team, this is gonna open up some more plays for Mixon, even though the snap count between the two wouldn't have been nearly as close as it was if Mixon didn't miss some time last season. Now, he recorded 60 receptions on 75 targets last year, which is pretty high for a running back. And he's going to be going right around the range where Najee Harris is getting drafted, Jameer Gibbs, Reese Hall. So if you want that safer option that will guarantee you targets, I do like Mixon at this spot. You just really don't know what to expect from Brees Hall just because of that ACL injury. And then Jameer Gibbs has never actually played a snap in the NFL yet. Najee Harris didn't have the best season as well. And I really don't like picking Najee this year either just because he's on a Steelers team that should be mediocre once again. Now, if you're more of a risk taker, I would take a shot on Jameer Gibbs or Brees Hall because the upside, I think, is much higher than Mixon overall in the season. But want that safe option like i said joe mixon is your guy here next up on our list ramondre stevenson going as running back number 10 in ppr listen the pass catching potential for this guy is absolutely through the roof he finished 2022 with 69 catches on 88 targets and you know what that makes me think of austin eckler and we see exactly how well austin eckler has been doing these past couple of seasons now i've had him both years on my fantasy team so far and I'm going to tell you right now firsthand, you're going to love the production that Ramondre gives you out of the backfield, like I said, especially that pass catching potential. Now, even though the snap count doesn't necessarily show it, I do think he was held back by Damian Harris a bit when he was healthy. But now that Damian Harris is gone, it's completely Ramondre's job, barring any situations where they sign a running back such as Dalvin Cook. 
And for his sake, I hope this does not happen. The only bad part about Stevenson is that this offense can be tough to watch at times. They do have games where they will struggle and barely score any points. But Ramondre's pass catching upside just cancels that out for me. And I would still love to have him on my team for a third year in a row. Next man up, Brees Hall going as running back number 11 in PPR. He averaged over 16 PPR fantasy points per game in his rookie year, which is absolutely insane. Of course, the main question in everybody's mind is, how is that ACL injury going to heal? And will he be back to his full potential in this upcoming season? Because when this guy is healthy, he's extremely explosive. And if he can get back to that form, I can easily see him being a top 10, top five running back even. I do like the addition of Aaron Rodgers to this offense. It's just going to give this team so much more confidence and hopefully open up some more lanes for the running backs. Even when Brees Hall was emerging as the starter last season, I found this interesting that he didn't exceed 70% of snaps in any game. And I'm really hoping the Jets also don't sign another running back such as Dalvin Cook, Zeke, or, you know, Leonard Fournette, because that's really going to hinder Brees Hall's potential in this upcoming year. The pass catching potential here is certainly there as well as he had 31 targets in his only six and one fourths games played last season. Next up, Jameer Gibbs going as running back number 14 in PPR. I absolutely love the tape on this guy coming out of Bama, and I can certainly see why people are comparing him to a younger Alvin Kamara. Multiple fantasy sites have stated that they think the Lions are going to be a top three offensive line in this upcoming year, which is always something I look for when going after certain running back. Now, this is going to open up a lot of holes for Gibbs, who is a very explosive player. My only concern here is that David Montgomery is going to come in in those, you know, goal line situations and short yard situations and steal a lot of touchdowns away from Gibbs. And I, I really do think that's going to happen here, just like Jamal Williams did last year with DeAndre Swift. Swift is a whole different story, though, and we're going to talk about him, you know, in multiple videos down the line, I'm sure, and how poorly he was used by the Lions. But anyways, the main reason that you're going to go out and draft a guy like Jameer Gibbs is for his pass catching potential. And then any rushing yards on top of that is just icing on the cake for you. Next up, we have Rashad White going as running back number 22 in this upcoming season. With Leonard Fournette exiting Tampa, I do see White sliding into that clear number one role. I don't think Keyshawn Vaughn or Chase Edmonds come even close to his snap count in this upcoming season. He should be that every down back that we were looking for or are looking for this season when we're drafting this guy. And also, the Bucks did not go out and draft another running back, so that's a good sign for Rashad White. Now, White did have 50 receptions on 58 targets last season and ran for 481 yards. While his average of 3.7 yards per carry isn't that impressive, you really can't blame the guy because the offensive line was bottom five in the league last year. And I don't think things are going to really change here in this upcoming season for their offensive line, but I do think Rashad White's pass catch potential will cancel out those short run plays if he gets them. DeAndre Swift is the next person up on our list here, going as running back number 25. Look at what Miles Sanders did in Philly last year, guys. 1,269 rushing yards and the best offensive line in football. And personally, I don't even think Miles Sanders is the level that DeAndre Swift is. Swift is going to a team that hopefully is going to use him the correct way because he has so much potential in this league and he's only 24 years old. He's very efficient on the ground, averaging 4.7 yards per carry throughout his entire career. And now, like I said, he's going behind the best offensive line in football. Now with Swift going behind players like Damian Pierce, Cam Akers, Dalvin Cook, even in some drafts. Now, if Sanders was any indication of how well DeAndre Swift is going to do this year, then where he's going in drafts right now is way too low. I'd, I'd rather have a guy like DeAndre Swift on my team over Damian Pierce simply because the Eagles are much better of an overall team than the Texans. Same goes for Cam Akers and the Rams. These teams are both predicted by Vegas to not win many games at all. Eagles should easily hit that 10 win mark this season again. Like I said, best offensive line. I, I want everything to do with most of this team, including DeAndre Swift. Next up here, A.J. Dillon going as running back number 32 in PPR. 
The snap count between AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones was surprisingly close last year. It was only separated by about 100 snaps, which kind of shocked me. But the real reason that you're drafting AJ Dillon this late is in case he becomes a starter at any point in this season. And I think the main factor in that would be an Aaron Jones injury. God forbid. We're not, we're never wishing for any injuries, of course, but. Most people think that Jones is the only pass catching guy on this team when that's actually not true. AJ Dillon actually recorded 28 receptions on 43 targets in 2022 and also ran for another 770 yards while only technically starting in three of those games. I do like my chances, especially at the discounted price that Dillon is going at. Like I said, RB number 32 this year, and you're going to get players around this mark like Jamal Williams. David Montgomery, I'll take my chances with A.J. Dillon, like I said, for that potential upside that he eventually gets that starting role for a couple weeks even. Jarek McKinnon is running back number 39 in this upcoming season, and I'm solely taking a chance on McKinnon just for his pass catching potential. In PPR leagues, this man is great. In best ball leagues, he's even better because we've seen that he has some explosive weeks in him. He is on the top scoring offense in the league as well. So you know he's going to get those opportunities. And when he did get those opportunities last season, he proved everybody right having those massive games in weeks 14 and 15 in particular, where he dropped 30 point games back to back weeks. This is definitely going to win you some fantasy leagues. And like I was talking about earlier with the best ball leagues, you want this guy on your bench just for that potential that he drops these massive games. I still love Pacheco, by the way, as a player. I've talked about him in multiple videos in the past. He would be a better add in your standard leagues rather than PPR and best ball. One more thing to add, not like it really matters too much for this Chiefs offense because they are dominant in every single aspect, but the running back strength of schedule is also top 10 in the league, which gives you just a bit more confidence in Kinnan and even Pacheco. Last but not least here, running back number 42, Elijah Mitchell. Now, I really like Elijah Mitchell just for the handcuff factor to Christian McCaffrey. God forbid anything happens, Elijah Mitchell would slide into that number one to number two running back role on your fantasy football team, in my opinion. I don't think you'd ever start Elijah Mitchell if CMC was healthy. And I also don't think Mitchell is going to get any pass catching attempts while CMC is healthy as well. Uh, Mitchell is actually still a super young player at 25 years old. Back in 2021, when he started in 10 games, he almost eclipsed 1,000 yards. He only played in 11 total games. Started in 10, played in 11 total, almost eclipsed 1,000 yards and managed 4.7 yards per carry, which is very good. And this guy is definitely talented and deserves to be drafted with one of those last roster spots on your fantasy team. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a thumbs up. I'm going to be coming with more fantasy content all throughout the year. Hopefully you draft some of these running backs on this list and it pays off for you in the future. Have a great day, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.